in the last video i discussed about uh, velocity and acceleration i'll talk uh, more on acceleration when do you say the body is uh, uh, undergoing accelerator motion when uh, the velocity of a body changes with time then we say it is accelerated then we say when the body velocity of the body change with time and in last video we saw that velocity can change in two ways either its magnitude change with time or its direction can change with time or you can have both both magnitude and direction both change with time then we say the body is undergoing accelerated motion the body is undergoing accelerated motion right so when the velocity change with time we say the body is undergoing accelerated motion and mathematically we define acceleration as rate of change of velocity with respect to time that's called acceleration so a is dv by dt so a can remain constant or it can also change with time the acceleration of body can remain constant or see if v is changing with time we say it is accelerated motion but this acceleration may also change with time or acceleration can remain constant if acceleration remain constant means if suppose a is 2 meter per second square that means see uh, regarding unit you must be very clear that uh, uh, the unit of distance is meter and uh, velocity is uh, dr by dt so it is distance upon time dimensionally this is distance upon time dimension wise so it is a uh, uh, meter per second and acceleration is dv by dt so it is meter per second per second or we call it meter per second square so when acceleration is 2 meter per second square what does it mean it means that the velocity is increasing at the rate of 2 meter per second per second when acceleration is 2 meter per second that means the velocity increases velocity increases at the rate of suppose the magnitude of acceleration is 2 meter per second then that means velocity increases at the rate of at the rate of 2 meter per second per second that means if uh, right now velocity is uh, 10 meter per second then in next one second it will go to 12 meter per second and next one second is going to be 14 meter per second so we say the body is accelerating at the rate of 2 meter per second square this velocity is increasing every second by 2 meter per second square if it is 10 meter per second right now then after one second it is going to be 12 meter per second and next second it will be going to 14 meter per second after 3 seconds going to be 16 meter per second right so in this way velocity is increasing that means at t equal to 10 second if the velocity is say 10 meter per second and at 12 second velocity is going to be 12 meter per second at 13 sorry uh, i'm wrong 11 meter per second the velocity is going to be 12 meter per second at 12 meter 12 second the velocity is going to be 40 meter per second so every second passes on the velocity increases by 2 meter per second so the acceleration is 2 meter per second per second it's increasing at the rate of 2 meter per second per second right that's what it means that that's what it means and uh, sometimes this acceleration can also be varying this can also be time varying i'll give you an example see uh, many of you might uh, uh, be riding a bike or a um, two wheeler right when you ride two wheeler when you start your two wheeler initially your velocity increases rapidly initially your velocity increases rapidly but as the time passes on the rate of increase of velocity decreases rate of increase of velocity decreases does not mean velocity decreases velocity still increases but increase at lower pace initially when you start your vehicle when you start your vehicle right so initially you accelerate faster means your velocity increases rapidly 
velocity increases rapidly velocity increases at a rapid rate but as the time passes on your acceleration falls acceleration falls means velocity still increases but it is increasing at less rate less rate it is increasing at decreasing pace right velocity still increases but it is increasing at less rate or decreasing pace so we say acceleration falls acceleration falls right and accelerating constant is your velocity increases at constant pace throughout then you say it is constant acceleration so your acceleration can be time varying it can be constant it can be constant if your acceleration is constant then we say if acceleration is constant then we say it is uniformly accelerated motion we say it is uniformly accelerated motion right and this motion can be it can be in a straight line if it is in a straight line if it is in a straight line then we say it is one dimensional motion we say it is one dimensional motion and if it is not in a straight line if it is in a see uh, the the three kind of motion you can have motion can be one dimensional that is motion in a straight line is called one dimensional motion also in a straight line straight line str that's called one dimensional motion and uh, if you have motion in a curve which is confined to say uh, here uh, even straight line is also called curve but i am talking about a curve different from straight line a curve which is not the straight line if a motion is in a curve which is different from straight line which is and this curve is confined to confined to plane say if it is moving a curve say straight line means if it's moving like this then we say it's one dimensional motion one dimensional motion if body is moving like this and this curve is confined to single plane then it say two dimensional motion and if it is moving in a curve such that this curve is not confined to a plane this curve the plane of curve the curve is not lying in a single plane then we say it is three dimensional motion for example if suppose this is three dimensional coordinate system and if suppose the uh, the body moves in this kind of circle it's not it's not confined to uh, 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 sorry this is can we say the body moves like this like this so this curve is not confined to a single plane so it is a three dimensional motion all the coordinates see you need three coordinates and if all the coordinates change with time all the coordinates during the motion if all these three coordinates changes we say it is three dimensional motion here what do you have you can take a coordinate system like this x and y this plane can itself be taken as xy plane and then you see only x and y coordinate change with time your z coordinate remain constant here i can take even this as x axis so what do you have your only one coordinate is changing with time only x coordinate change with time and taking this coordinate system is our discretion so if only two coordinates change with time is a two dimensional motion here only one coordinate change with time is one dimensional motion here all the three coordinates are changing with time it's called three dimensional motion it's called three dimensional motion that's that's what we mean when you say one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional motion right get your point moreover uh, somebody can say that i'll take my coordinate system like this 
and then uh, here all the three coordinates are changing with time right so but it's not a three dimensional motion even if you take this coordinate system it's not a three dimensional motion it's not a three dimensional motion if there is a possibility that uh, you take a coordinate system where only one coordinate is changing with time it's one dimensional motion there is always a possibility to take this as x-axis this is y axis this has z axis and while the body moves only one coordinate change with time so if there is a possibility to choose a coordinate system such that while the body moves only one coordinate change with time then it is one dimensional motion here there is a possibility when a body is moving in a curved path which is confined to a plane there is always a possibility to choose a coordinate system see choosing a coordinate system is our discretion it's our freedom no law of nature none of the laws of nature tells you anything regarding coordinate system you don't have any law of nature hinting you about taking this or that coordinate system so if body moving a curve and that curve is confined to a plane there is always a possibility of choosing a coordinate system such that while body moves on that curve only two coordinates changes and in that case we say it is two dimensional motion while you see this case while the body moves in this curve then in every i cannot take a coordinate system where only one or two coordinates change with time in every case all the three coordinates are changing with time it's not a curve confined to a plane so it's a three dimensional motion three dimensional motion okay that's something which uh, we will be requiring quite often so let's come back to uh, what is called uniformly accelerated motion when the body is undergoing uniform uh, acceleration undergoing uniform acceleration uniform acceleration is acceleration remaining constant with time when acceleration remain constant with time we call it uniform uniform acceleration and the motion is called uniformly accelerated motion right so if a remains constant with time this a is what a is dv by dt and this is constant see acceleration vector quantity and when vector quantity is constant that simply means its magnitude is constant its direction is remaining constant its direction is remaining constant with time its magnitude remains constant with time then only i say acceleration is constant the vector quantity is said to be constant only when its magnitude and direction both are constant right so since this is a constant quantity i can write this as see you must have uh, introductory knowledge of uh, calculus when you read this topic if you don't have you just go through uh, some part of calculus initial chapter of calculus then only you will be feeling good at this chapter so i can write this dv as a dt and then i can integrate it then i can integrate it and integrating this will give me v equals to since a is constant plus some constant plus some constant whenever you carry out indefinite integral when you integrate it you have to add one constant right and why you are doing this you will be uh, understanding it well while you read this chapter of indefinite integral see you must read this chapter of indefinite integral at least if you don't read a different integral then also it will be okay if you read different integral is good it's fine but i will try my best to use a different integral less and use this basic uh, uh, theorems of integral calculus in different integral and you must also read some part of differentiation you don't need a very good concept of uh, the chapter for this uh, physics part uh, but you need very good concept of this topic when you do mathematics right but for just use in physics you don't need a very strong concept of calculus right later on at higher level when you read physics you need a very strong concept of calculus but right now you can just uh, remember the formula that will be useful to you right so dv is a dt a why i have taken a outside integral because a is constant with time so that will be at plus c and uh, in order to evaluate this constant you must know the velocity at time t equal to 0 
you must know what is the velocity at t equal to 0. So, so suppose at t equal to 0 the velocity is v0. So if I put this at t equal to 0 the velocity is v0. So you just put t equal to 0 over here. So putting this in this equation what you get? You get c equals to v0. C can be a vector constant. So this v is v0 plus at. Right? v is v0 plus at. And what is v? v can be expressed in terms of position as dr by dt. Get your point? So you have dr by dt as this. So even this can be written as and now I can integrate it on both sides. So again you have a constant. So your r vector is v naught t. You remember I will just write down the formula. You have the formula xn dx is the formula where n has to be mm, n should not be equal to 1 minus 1 sorry n should not be equal to minus 1 if n equals to minus 1 then this is in that case will be dx by x and the formula for this is log x log x plus a just remember this formula I will keep on writing the formula right for your reference so since you have t so t dt so t to the power this is t to the power 1 dt so t 1 plus 1 1 plus 1 so t square by 2 plus some vector constant see the constant has to be vector why because you cannot add a scalar to a vector you cannot add only vector to a vector see scalar cannot be added the, the addition of a vector and a scalar is not defined operation right so if you are given at t equal to 0 i is r naught so if you put it over here you get c as r naught vector so your r gives you the position is given by r naught plus v naught t plus this so this is equation this is your uh, equation of motion and now if the body is confined to one dimension the body is moving in one dimension then this formula will be I can take uh, the coordinate system as I can take this coordinate system see choosing coordinate system is afraid of see if I am knowing that body is moving along this straight line then I can take one of my axes along that uh, straight line itself so here you see only x coordinate change every time so at any point if the body is lying at a distance of x from the origin then uh, its position vector would be given by what the position vector would be given by xi cap and since the body is moving in a straight line suppose the acceleration is say ai cap the velocity is say vi cap everything is lying in a straight line right so uh, this equation will turn to what? It would be x equal to x naught. Let's put it over here. This will give you what? Xi cap equals to x naught i cap plus v naught i cap t a i cap t square and everywhere you have i cap so we can equate the 
coefficient of i cap, so we get x equal to x naught plus v naught t is half a t square. And if body lies at x equal to 0 at t equal to 0 so in that case uh, suppose the body is at origin at t equal to 0 then that means x naught is 0 at t equal to 0 then your position is uh, just given by this x equals to v naught t plus half a t square get a point similarly v is v naught plus a t the v naught is the initial velocity v naught is the initial velocity this is how v varying with time this is now how v vary with time getting a point okay so this is a distance travel at by the time t this is distance travel by at the end of time t after time t the distance travel is x at t equal to 0 x was 0 x was 0 so after time t the distance travel is this right and we can write x in terms of v also see from here you get what t equals to v minus v naught by a so we can write it over here v naught what i should write like this v minus v naught by a plus half square by a square so this will cancel out so what is left v naught minus v by a upon v naught plus this or this is what if I add it this will be v naught plus v upon 2 a or we can write it as v is not square the mistake it's not v not minus v it's v minus v not that's why i was getting incorrect result oh now it is now correct so it is v minus v not which will be taken out upon a and v plus so that will give me uh, this is v naught so this will be v minus v naught upon a and this will be v plus v naught by 2 and that is v square v naught square 2a equal to x so you can say v square is v naught square plus 2ax is final velocity square equals to initial velocity square plus 2x 2x i can get this formula easily if suppose acceleration is a a is the acceleration if a is the acceleration so a is dv by dx right i can get this uh, this is a bit lengthy i'll tell you in very short how this is coming so dv by dt is a a is acceleration Suppose I am taking one dimensional case. See this dv by dt can be written as dv by dx into dx by dt. Since so, in one dimensional motion this dx by dt will be the velocity. So v dv by dx as a and a is constant uniformly accelerated motion. So this will come as v dv a dx and now I can integrate it plus some constant. So v dv is again v square by 2 and this is ax plus some constant. Suppose at x equal to 0, suppose the body was at t equal to 0, body was at uh, x equal to 0. Suppose the velocity was v naught, then in that case you get what? c equals to v naught square by 2. You put these values x equal to 0 over here and v equals to v naught over here. So you get c and that leads to what? v square by 2 is equal to a x or you can say v square is v naught square plus 2 x so you can get it in any way you can get it from here also by eliminating t from these two equations or you can get it from here any way you can do 
the point so this is the basic uh, equations of uh, motions for one dimension one dimension it's uniformly accelerated motion and we'll make use of it in uh, doing some questions